All right, um, Cynta, obviously, especially your question there, Prevenny Dog. Our question, Cynta, Jenny Rathbone. Your Llywyd. Um, what is the First Minister's assessment of the implications for Wales of no trade deal uh, with the EU? Well, no deal is the worst deal. Uh, we know that no deal would mean trading under World Trade Organisation rules. Nobody wants that on either side of the uh, debate. And we know, of course, that that would put in place significant barriers to Welsh exports into uh, our biggest and most important market. Thank you, First Minister. Um, I find it difficult to understand how uh, Theresa May continues to say that no deal would be better than a bad deal. Uh, because I'd struggle to understand what the difference is. Uh, this is something that uh, the journalists don't seem to have asked her or don't have the opportunity to ask her. But I've uh, read that some experts say that it could cost as much as £45 billion if we crash out of the EU, compared with half that if we uh, come out with, a, with a, a negotiated deal. So what is the First Minister's assessment of what would happen to Wales and Welsh trade with Europe if there is no deal? Well, 67% of our exports go to the European market. Any obstacle uh, that would be faced by exporters is bound to be banned for them. Any extra costs uh, are bound to be banned uh, for them. And that's why it's hugely important that Brexit is handled in a, a realistic way, not the naivety that we have seen from some saying, well, the Germans will never allow uh, WTO rules to, uh, to operate. I think there has to be realism there. But above all else, we have to secure a Brexit that is a sensible Brexit, and above all else, one that does not affect in a negative way the economy of Wales. David Melding. First Minister, I'm sure you agree that uh, we should be aiming for uh, a good deal, a good deal for the United Kingdom, a good deal for Wales, and a good deal for the European, European Union, and I'm very confident that that is what will happen. But can I just uh, refer you to the UK Economic Outlook that was published in uh, November uh, 2016, which did ad identify, and this was on uh, uh, the trends before Brexit, that uh, our exports to EU markets were likely to uh, go down to about 37% by 2030. That's a UK figure, not just Wales. And it was very important that we also uh, develop those other markets outside Europe that are closest to us, particularly North America, Africa, and uh, the Middle East. And I hope that your uh, trade policy will focus on these uh, markets, as well as, of course, taking advantage of whatever the relationships we now secure with the very EU. Much. Very much so. We work for markets uh, anywhere and everywhere for Welsh produce. I remember when I was Rural Affairs Minister, I spent much uh, of my time uh, getting Welsh lamb exports to the United Arab Emirates, for example, and we know that uh, lamb is exported around the world. Uh, but we shouldn't think that it's a choice between accessing the European market or accessing other markets. The European market is much bigger than the US market, and the US is further away, whereas the EU, of course, will share a land border with us. The European market will continue to be our most important market for many, many years to come, which is why, of course, it's so important to get a good deal that benefits all and, above all else, allows us to sell without, without any kind of obstacle in that European market. Simon Thomas. Uh, well, and all the Dublin, the Bernays, and the Democrats, we have all the seen and have been with. But in the applied Camry, I have it. Men who are leading the Tories are UKIP, are getting the Brexit, I have all. Um, but the, the Lord of the Vio Board Power to Trouble the Cabinet, if he would call the Democratic Rivadol, and Lina Guerri, a getting the Brexit, I have all of them. On the go by Spoki, them a midi Guerri Hunna, Guy Oveni, he sit Ashoni Kawai, as the Bashna Sema Manediad, Didamif, Reed Giddenig, or Amaith, Igwaskan Achi and Hamri, Tigat and uh, Keed Batnevi in Europe, he would view sit and Dal view Ad Lodeth, or Vachnad Sengo. Well, do they mind that Marie Dengler does the other carry the gun? We will see with we dot Mark Williams or Wall with with the guido the Peter Do they make a he dot like Camry or Ford or Blight Brexit? I have all the Ogubal and sit at the new secret high board Brexit. I have all the men dig with Mark Papir Gwyneth Cross and Dangos of Ford or Papir Gwyneth Cross. We can get in or wrong tree flight, tire flight, and and a say a hin. I give him on and Dangos a cover yet a man and lean a sit dele a sit dele Brexit. Carly, you were three D trustable in the nessa. 
Question die, Adam Price. Does the Welsh Government now have all the information it needs to make a decision on whether to provide the financial support requested by the promoters of the Circuit of Wales? We are awaiting some reports from our external advisers to enable us to complete the comprehensive due diligence process, uh, but uh, we will be in a position to take a decision before the end of the month. I think people will draw their own conclusion, First Minister, on why this decision has been pushed beyond the general election. But uh, on, the wider theme, on the wider theme of openness, I have been told in written answers by the Cabinet Secretary for Economy, Infrastructure and Skills that the idea of an 80 per cent government guarantee, which was at the heart of the proposal that you rejected last year, was first suggested by the company in mid-April 2016. Now, that is not accurate, First Minister. It was your government with the direct knowledge of your own private office that suggested this as an alternative to a 100% guarantee in the first week of April. So would you now take the opportunity to correct the record? Well, I can say that the model that is being examined now is, is not that model. It's a wholly different uh, model. He makes the uh, insinuation that somehow this has been pushed back for some insidious reason. I can tell him. Uh, that uh, unlike him, we do conduct proper due diligence. People expect that, and uh, people in Blenheim expect that. They want to be sure, uh, and we want to see this project delivered, but it has to be delivered on a sustainable basis. They would expect us in Blenheim to look at this very carefully in order to make sure that the project stands up on its own for years uh, to come. Uh, we've received the majority of the reports already. The remaining reports um, we expect to see in the course of this week. There is no a strange thing going on there. That is because we awaited further information from the Heads of the Valleys Development Corporation themselves. We don't expect any more information from them now. And I can say that officials are preparing a comprehensive project appraisal report. Uh, there will be a cabinet paper drafted and a decision will be taken before the end of the month. Lynn Needle. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, I very much welcome your positive statement about wanting the circuit to succeed. Absolutely. And as you're aware, some of the biggest names in automotive engineering and research have written to you, Aston Martin, TVR, Tails, demonstrating their confidence in the project and urging a swift, positive decision. Are you able to confirm today what date the Cabinet is likely to meet to make a decision on this? Uh, I would expect the Cabinet to meet in the course of the next fortnight, with a decision being uh, taken, of course, at that Cabinet uh, meeting. That is the plan at this moment in time. You know, we want to get this uh, dealt with, obviously, as the people of Planet Gwent would as well. Uh, I understand the great enthusiasm for the project, but we also have to temper that, of course, with ensuring uh, that the project uh, stacks up on its own, uh, that the level of risk is acceptable, that there is substantial investment from the uh, private sector, and that's what we've been working with, uh, with the Circuit of Wales uh, team. Uh, and we want to be in a position where we can uh, look at a sustainable model uh, 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 in a fortnight's time. And as I say, what I, uh, what I would like to do is deliver the Circuit of Wales but we have to make sure that the model is, is, is uh, robust, and that's, uh, that's the point what we're at, that we're at now. Mohamed Ashka. Good officer. By your Cabinet Secretary on 17th of May, he stated that due diligence is an important part of consideration in financing any project and that he would not shortcut that process. Recently, it was claimed that the Circuit of Wales project could be lost to Scotland. If the Welsh Government did not make a decision soon, will you confirm that scaremongering such as this will not result in decision-making taken until the most rigorous assessment of the viability and economic benefit of this project has been made or completed by your Government? Well, pe people would expect us as a government to examine any project, particularly one of this importance and size, a very, very uh, in, in great detail uh, to make sure that we can be uh, satisfied if we are being asked to uh, deliver support. Uh, and of course, private sector investors will do exactly the same thing. And I say, uh, on these benches, we want to see the project move forward, but it is important for all concerned, including the people of Blaine Gwent, uh, that the fullest uh, examination of the proposal is done in order to, pro to provide reassurance for the future. Question in our Ghana Wayne were played here when the Roth played Andrew R. T. Davis. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, First Minister, could I 
Could I identify myself with the comments that you made about the uh, tragedies in London earlier on in the week? Um, obviously, we do stand shoulder to shoulder with the citizens of London and Manchester, uh, and ultimately, by getting about our normal way of life, we are defeating these terrorists, these thugs, uh, who are inflicting such terrible, terrible tragedies on some of our communities. And whilst we might live in Wales, we stand shoulder to shoulder with the communities in London and anywhere else where people feel under threat. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, with that in mind, that the general election now on Thursday, obviously people will be voting on commitments made by the parties. And you yesterday, in your role as First Minister, uh, said that Labour, if they were to win on Thursday, would get rid of the Barnet formula. Yet today, uh, we've had Scottish Labour firmly coming out and saying that there are no plans to get rid of the Barnet formula. Who's right, Kasia Dugdale or Carbon Jones? Well, I've spoken to Kasia Dugdale. What we do know is the Tories would take money away from both Wales and Scotland, uh, and that is something that, that is pretty clear in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of the, the manifesto. The situation is quite simply this, that uh, upon the election of a Labour government, that Barnet would remain in place in the short term. There would then be a long-term uh, funding formula put in place according to the needs of the different nations and regions of the UK, uh, ensuring, of course, that no part of the UK is unfairly disadvantaged. That means that Barnet would come to an end at that time. Uh, I wonder where the commitment from the Conservatives is to ensure fair funding for Wales. Well, well, as well you know, the agreement between the Welsh Government and the Westminster Government put the funding floor in place that was warmly endorsed by your Finance Minister only in December of last year. Thirteen years, you did nothing. But that's not quite, that's not quite what the Scottish Conservatives are saying, and I offered you the opportunity to actually clarify your position, because you were very robust last night in saying that the Barnet formula would be scrapped. Actually, what the Scottish, what the Scottish Labour Party are saying is that there will be no scrapping of the Barnet formula, and this is their words, not to scrap the Barnet formula, and all that is merely being proposed in the next Parliament, these are their words, is a long-term consultation to look at funding of the UK allocation around the public expenditure that comes from Westminster to ensure that it reflects the nations and regions of the United Kingdom. That's their words, that is. That isn't getting rid of the Barnet formula at all. Aren't you misleading the people of Wales with your comments yesterday, First Minister? That is exactly what it means. If there is a new formula in place, that is the end of Barnet uh, at, that, at that point. Of course, in the short term, Barnet would remain, because there's nothing else in place uh, at that time. But we want to make sure that Wales receives fair funding. Yes, we came to an agreement on funding. That's because the UK government resolutely refused uh, to look at uh, funding as far as Wales is concerned. It was a compromised position. We have never changed our position as a government that the Barnet formula has run uh, towards the end of its life, and now is the time uh, to start planning for a new formula that will reflect the proper needs of the different nations and regions of the UK as they are now, not as they were in 1979. First Minister, you were very clear last night in that you were saying you were scrapping the Barnet formula full stop. Uh, that, there was no equivocation around that. You were saying that last night on the television and through the news. Scottish, Scottish Labour Party is saying quite clearly there will be no scrapping of the Barnet formula. How on earth can anyone take any of the pledges that you are making seriously when you have been caught out in the last week of this campaign? And ultimately, it, 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 it's a... The Labour Party, the Labour Party. But let Andrew R. T. Davis con Party continue his not. question. But ultimately, the funding of public services is a vital consideration for the electorate on Thursday. We have put a funding floor in place with agreement of the Welsh Government that guarantees that funding in Wales will not go under £115 for every £100 that is spent in England. You yesterday said Labour Party policy was to get rid of the Barnet formula. Scottish, uh, Scottish Labour Party are saying that is not the case and all that will come forward is a consultation. Isn't it a fact that all Labour policies are just built on sand, First Minister? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it a shame that he will not support uh, a situation where Wales gets the funding it deserves? Yeah. Isn't it a shame? It tells you the, of the way that they think. And isn't it a shame that he was not there to make these points in subsequent debates on, on television? It's, you know, I'm sure that it was possible to see a, a live broadcast from Gran Canaria uh, to make sure that his view was, uh, was put forward as some new claims to be the leader of the Welsh Conservatives. And uh, as he rightly said, the Secretary of State was unwilling to uh, take part in the third debate because he pulled out because I was in it. That's what, that's what uh, we, uh, we heard. He was not willing to come and debate, and other leaders as well, uh, and to put forward the, the Conservative case. He has some brass neck 
to come before this chamber and say that somehow things are a shambles on these benches when, on three different occasions, the Tories couldn't even field the same person in three different debates. So, uh, so lacking in confidence were they in their own uh, case. And we've seen over the past few days shambles after shambles after shambles in the Conservative Party. I invite him to read the UK Labour manifesto where it's absolutely clear where it says that there will be a new funding formula that reflects the needs of different nations and regions of the UK. A commitment we have made, a commitment his party has run from. Arweinydd Plaid Cymru, Lian Wood. Diolch Llywydd. Uh, First Minister, on Thursday people will go to the polls in what is a very important election. It's been noted how you've airbrushed your UK party leader out of your campaign and how you have issued a separate manifesto. There are two Labour manifestos, three if you count the Scottish manifesto that was referred to uh, earlier. In the interests of openness, transparency and honesty, just before people cast their votes on Thursday, will you tell us, are Labour MPs elected in Wales next Thursday bound by the commitments in your manifesto or by the commitments in your UK Labour leaders' manifesto? By the Welsh Labour manifesto, because there is no... A dichotomy between the two manifestos. I mean, the leader of Plaid Cymru might, might have noticed, but devolution occurred in 1999, and on that basis, it's not possible for political parties who have a presence in the different nations of the UK to produce a manifesto that's exactly the same. We reflect the uh, the reality of uh, devolution. And that's exactly what we've done in our manifesto. There is no contradiction. Uh, in terms of the Welsh Labour Manifesto and the UK Labour Manifesto, save in areas that are devolved, where the decisions in those in, uh, regarding those policies are made here. You say there are no differences. First Minister, there are differences in the Name two one. manifestos, but I'll come back to that now Name shortly. One. Your party leader has been described variously as the man who broke the Labour Party, that was Chris Bryant, a lunatic at the top of the Labour Party, that was Owen Smith, Hard left and out of touch with the electorate, that was Stephen Kinnock. Would you like to associate yourself with any of those statements about your leader, or would you like to take this opportunity to distance yourself from the views of those Welsh Labour candidates? Well, let me make it very, very clear. Jeremy Corbyn will be an excellent Prime Minister. He will offer hope uh, for Britain, as opposed to the endless succession of Tory cuts that we have seen from the benches opposite. Uh, we would see a government that would take Britain forward, would deliver a, a proper devolved settlement for Wales based on the legislation that we have put forward. While at the same time, we see Plaid Cymru looking at creating a coalition with the Tories in common. <laughs> Trot that one out, don't they, when they've got nothing left? First Minister, you, you must be very desperate to play on people's OK, I, 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 we do need to hear what's being asked and the answers, so let's, let's all calm down and look forward to next week. I want to come back to this point about the differences in the manifestos between you and your UK Labour leader. Zero hours contracts banned, uh, tuition fees scrapped, the railways in public hands, that's what's in the UK manifesto. Labour is in power here and none of these policies have been implemented. Can we get a commitment from you now that you will give your unmitigated support to those policies now that it's official policy of your party or are you accepting that you are about to mislead the electorate on Thursday? <laughs> There's nothing more misleading than a party that says we want more money from Westminster but at the same time says we want independence from Westminster. That is a fundamental contradiction but she asks three questions. First of all, if the money is made available to us to look again at student finance then we will do so, of course we will. Zero hours contracts are in the main not devolved. We do not support zero hours contracts, they have grandstanded on that. Uh, we as a party want to make sure that we see a society that is fair that is just and where people have the opportunities they need to flourish in the future. Only a Labour government in the UK can do that. Plaid Cymru can deliver nothing. This is dishonest. 
Gwynedd Group UKIP, Neil Hamilton. The Ochlad. I'm sure I'll carry the First Minister with me in saying that the last ten minutes has proved, if nothing else, that the time for sterile political point scoring is long past in this general election campaign to have any positive effect either way. And therefore, we should concentrate more on building a successful economic future for Wales collectively, uh, supporting other parties where that's necessary. And to that extent, I'd like to... Uh, refer back to the question which Adam Price asked uh, in, immediately before party leaders' questions. Uh, and I take what the First Minister said in response to his supplementary about how the government must conduct proper due diligence of the current uh, proposal. But you know, the Auditor General's report on the initial funding uh, of this project uh, contains a catalogue of opportunities for due diligence to be conducted over the last five years, starting with the calling in of the planning application in 2012, which was, uh, which was approved by Carl Sargent on account of its economic, socio-economic benefits. Uh, in 2014, we had the uh, in initial funding of £16 million pounds for the development of the project. Then we had a public inquiry on the deregistration of the common land. Then in April 2016, Edwina Hart rejected the first guarantee application. Uh, in July 2016, uh, Ken Skates rejected the second guarantee proposal which then led to intensive discussions with officials on a variety of important issues. And then this year, in January, we had the fully funded term sheets provided by the company. Uh, and we were told due diligence was to last three to four weeks. That was then extended to six weeks. And then it's been extended further. And the First Minister today has given us, I hope, an end date for the consideration of this proposal. So we've had endless due diligence. And I know that the Auditor General has made a number of important criticisms of the process. I don't want to go into that. that now because I want to see this project succeed and I hope at the end of the day that the Welsh Government is going to give it the go-ahead. But does he not think that this tortuous process is far too long, even though this is a massive project uh, for the future, its transformative potential is so great that we should have got on with this uh, much more diligently than we have. So with regard to a planning application or the deregistration of common land, due diligence wouldn't occur at that point because they are not application, they are planning applications and there are applications that are not to do with the, uh, the robustness or not of a particular business. That comes later on. I make no apologies for the due diligence process. It is robust. It has taken longer than we would have wanted. That's because uh, information has had to be sought at certain points, and that information has been provided. Uh, I've given a date uh, to members by which we wanted to uh, take that decision now, and I've indicated to the members I would, I would like to see this project proceed. Uh, but it has to proceed on a basis that is sustainable and where the risk to the public purse is acceptable. Well, I thank the First Minister for, for that reply. I see also on the BBC website today that the government has been uh, in talks in, uh, with a view to getting the Golf Open Championships uh, to come to Wales and the Tour de France as well. And also there's a possibility if the Brussels Stadium is not ready in time that the Euro 2020 uh, could be held in Wales. And I would support uh, the government's interest in that. Uh, Ken Skates has quite rightly said that uh, Wales has great potential to ho host major new events that haven't yet been to Wales. The Circuit of Wales has already got the contract for the Moto Grand Prix, and that's yet another opportunity for us in Wales to show what we can do as a host for major world sports projects. Uh, and therefore, th this fits into the government's overall objective for making Wales a major international sports venue, and that's another reason for us to see the success of this project. I, I can only repeat what I've already said to him, that... Uh, of course, we recognise the potential of the circuit, uh, and I've said that uh, it's something we would want to support, but it has to be based on a model that is, that is sound and a model that works well for both private and public investors. And it's also important to note that the, there is no request for any public money to be invested in this project up front, and that all is being, that is being sought is a guarantee, which is a commercial guarantee, which the government will be paid to, to, to finance, uh, which will be called only as and when all the construction on the site is completed, so there will be physical assets against which the, the loan can be secured. Um, and on an annual basis, the maximum risk to the Welsh Government is said to be eight and a half to nine million pounds a year, many, many years in the future for a limited period of time. So uh, the risk is uh, secured on 100% of the assets, but the guarantee is going to apply to less than a half of the, the value of those assets. So on the face of it, this does look a very good deal. And whilst I appreciate we have to go through the due diligence process, 
it is, I think, of vital importance to the economic prosperity, not just of South East Wales, but the whole of South Wales, that this project does get the go-ahead. Well, this has all been considered as part of the uh, due diligence uh, process. Uh, there's, not, there's no difference to my mind in being asked to provide money up front and being asked to provide a guarantee. The, uh, the, the commitment is, is the same. Indeed, with a guarantee, uh, there is a need uh, for more robustness in terms of making sure that, that guarantee is unlikely to be called on. I, mean, I think it better be guaranteed, but uh, if I can use that, but it's important that as much is done to, to minimise any risk to the public purse. That's uh, what we're looking at as part uh, of this uh, process. Uh, and as I said before, it, it's a project that has potential. And I think this has helped the, um, uh, the, the circuit themselves. Uh, a, a robust testing process of their model is good for them. Uh, they are able then to, uh, to think carefully about what they think will be sustainable in the longer term. Uh, and on that basis, uh, we look forward now, when all the information is in, we trust this week to be able to take a decision over the course of the next two or three weeks. Question three, Rina Piorwer. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about the scanning of the system. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about the system. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about the system. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about the system. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about the system. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about the system. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about the system. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about the system. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about the system. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about the system. Yn digwyd i geisio gwireddu cyn lluniau wella'r cysylltiad rhwng yr A55 a ffordlad Caer Gyrby, lle mae'n adagfeydd mawr ar hyn o bryd yn enwedig panel loria yn ceisio gadael y porthlad. Um, mae pobl yn gofyn i fi yn aml pa bryd uh, welwn i'r ffordd y mae'n cael ei chwblhau, a dwi na yn rhannu i pryderon nhw ynglyn ar oedi. Chafodd y cysylltiad uh, erioed i orffen mewn difri, mi gafodd yr A55 ei adeiladu i gyffinu ar porthlad, ond nid i mewn uh, ag allan o'r porthlad. Dwi'n sylweddoli bod angen buddsoddiadau eraill hefyd, uh, yn y porthlad. Mi fyson ni'n gwerthorogi uh, arwydd o ymrwymiad gan y Llywodraeth, gan y Llywodraeth i bwrw mlaen efo gwaith at gywiro uh, y morglawdd hefyd yn yr hir dymor. Ond a gawn ni ymrwymiad byr dymor uh, rwan bod y cysylltiad hanfodol yma yn mynd i weld goladydd yn fian yn unol y dymuniadau pobl sy'n byw yn y rhan yn ogair gyby sydd yn pryderu uh, bod yn aberygl yn y sefyllfa Personal and Augustal, I bought a new sense. Ma, ma, I thought we'd come to say that network rail and a hun, but we need to go to the one night honey. Mohun ran o basically started in line a the plagiat a part of the China. I got cross in line a this and this moon save and the end the end of the hour are today today. Croesfan, dros, uh, dros y ddenau i, I hunan. Uh, mae'r cyfnod nesa o'r gwaith ddadblygu wedi dechrau a bydd na uh, lwybr yn cael i ddatgan y mai 2018. Felly mae yn symud mlaen yn y ffordd byddwn ni'n erbyn. Mark Isherwood. You referred to the third Menai crossing and clearly congestion on the existing uh, Menai and Britannia bridges have been a problem for many years. It's a decade since the Welsh Government commissioned report identified eight options, including a new bridge, but that didn't go forward uh, to uh, delivery. You said um, last May um, that you'd promised to make the third crossing your priority for North Wales if you form a government. And of course, your government uh, announced before the Christmas last year that it had appointed consultants uh, to look at routes for a proposed uh, new crossing uh, to Anglesey, um, which could begin by 2021 if it gets the go-ahead. Can you provide an assurance that we're not going to have a rerun of, uh, of 2007 when we had similar assurances after a commissioned report was produced for the Welsh Government uh, and that you envisage this uh, going ahead on the basis of the um, situation remaining as it currently does? We have appointed ACOM to support our next phase of the development work that will result in the announcement of a preferred route in May 2018. Uh, our aim is to uh, see the third Menai crossing open in 2022. Question Susie Davis. Uh, will the First Minister provide an update on discussions uh, that the Welsh Government has had regarding the Ford plant? Well, those discussions are ongoing. Uh, I met with the CEO of Ford Europe before uh, Christmas. Uh, we are aware of the plans for the facility uh, and we're working closely with all stakeholders to guarantee the future of the site and its workforce. Well, thank you for that answer, First Minister. In March, your Cabinet Secretary told us that Ford management had told him that employment numbers would remain broadly the same until 2021. 
Uh, and he also said that he thought that Ford management could communicate better with its employees and its uh, members regarding the long-term objectives for the plant. Um, since then, can you tell us whether Ford has kept you informed whether there have actually been any um, uh, falls in order numbers, and if there have been any falls, how the guaranteed number of workers has been deployed at the plant, bearing in mind, of course, they'll have individual expertise, and, of course, whether they've been getting regular updates on that long-term objective and achievement against that. Yes, they have. There are a number of possibilities that are being explored at the, uh, the Ford plant. We shouldn't forget that in September of uh, last year, Ford did announce that it would invest £100 million in the site from late uh, 2018. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the biggest challenge that the plant faces is Brexit. Uh, every single engine that leaves that plant is exported into the European market, and so uh, the terms that surround the exporting of those engines will be important <laughs> as far as the uh, plant is, is concerned. But we are working very closely with the company. I've met in my capacity as an Assembly member several times with them and with the uh, uh, with Works Council, uh, and uh, as First Minister, of course, have taken an interest in uh, ensuring that the uh, plant continues uh, to operate in the future and continues to employ uh, similar numbers in the future. Dylide. <laughs> We record that Prime Minister Dor Ford, the head of Ford Europe, the head of Mana Mana Government, the company that is running the dog, the head of Sodogion. My and we are the way born a brother on and in a bit bid and dig with are all here in the here down in the other and the European. Do snap and credit be then we have to get in there because now we should not be in the now. So we should be. A trefnu ar y dros dro yn holl bwysig i ffordd y hefyd i llawer o, uh, o gynhyrchwyr uh, eraill. Uh, mae hwn yn rhywbeth, mae ffordd yn ystyried yn hynny, mae wedi bod yn siarad yn ni ynglyn â, â hwnna, a wrth gwrs uh, safbwynt ni yw, yw hwn. Uh, bod yn holl bwysig i ffordd a sawl cwmni uh, arall yn Cymru, bod yn gallu cael mynediad i'r farchnad sengl heb unrhyw fath o'r rwystr. Cwestiwn pump, Janet Finch Saunders. Jill Llawydd. Will the First Minister make a statement on the health service in Wales? My priority for the health service throughout Wales is to provide high quality care to Welsh patients in the right place and at the right time by continuing to protect investment, right performance and deliver the range of commitments set out in taking Wales forward. I have to be honest with you, First Minister. I, don't, I stand here today not very confident of that because I'll tell you why. Since your own government interventions and special measures were placed on Betsy Cadwallader University Health Board two years ago, 227% more patients are waiting over 12 hours in A&E. 194 complaints came in last year. This is actually 30% of the total of all complaints in Wales. We have a 7,000 increase in patients now waiting for over 36 weeks for oral surgery. 5,000% increase for orthopaedics and trauma. I have repeatedly asked questions of you here and in writing and your Cabinet Secretary on behalf of many of my constituents who you are failing and who are struggling as a result, many in pain um, for these failings. And, you know, I would, I've asked you for detail as to how you are monitoring performance outcomes apart, as part of your special measures. Will you tell me at what point you believe that your government interventions at a cost already of over £10 million have actually resulted in any material improvements? And at what stage do you intend to actually pull the process of special measures, believing that your interventions have worked, that they've been successful, that we have this the relevant is, this and necessary... This is going way beyond a question now. Can, you, can you bring it to you've, an you've allowed no, longer there is questions. No, you will uh, show some respect, ask your yeah, yeah. complete your question. Right, my question is, at what point do you believe that you will withdraw special measures, believing that your interventions have helped in any way? Because I can tell you now, my constituents... Question is over. Please reply, First Minister. The, the Health Board is not yet ready to be uh, moved out of special measures. I can say, for example, that the Health Board has virtually eliminated diagnostic waits of over eight weeks, with March 2017 being 94% lower than March 2016. This is the lowest the Health Board has been since the standard was introduced in April 2010. 
Cancer performance in the health board is consistently amongst the best in Wales. March performance figures are 92.5% for the 62-day target, the best performance is January 2016, and 98.6% for the 31-day target. I can say that BCU has significantly improved the percentage of CARMS referrals seen within 28 days, from 18% in April 2016 to 89% in March 2017. The number of delayed transfers of care in Betsy Cadwallader are reduced again in April, down to 90. There have been reductions in five out of six months since October 2016, and that figure is 41% lower in October and 40% better than the same period last year. That's a real achievement, just to give you some examples, given winter pressures and year on year increases in demand for health and social services. If there's one thing I can say, that as I have spoken to people on the doorstep all across the north of Wales, the last thing they want is the Tories in charge and Jeremy Hunt in charge. Don Bowden. First Minister, a couple of months ago the Naylor report was published and the report uh, highlights the dire state of the NHS estates capability in, in England. Um, Theresa May has indicated that she will action the report's recommendations which includes selling off many parts of the NHS estate in England as part of a process including uh, a two-for-one, buy-one-get-one-free deal, if you like, um, to tempt private companies. Can you assure me, First Minister, that here in Wales we will maintain the publicly owned status of our NHS estate and not follow the route proposed by the Tories in selling off the estate to mask their gross underfunding of the NHS in England? Well, we, we see in England delayed transfers of care going up, we see waiting times going up. Uh, we see the great popularity of Jeremy Hunt, of course, as, uh, as the Secretary of State, is involved in the streets. We know that. We saw the doctor strike that took place in, in England. We have no plans at all uh, to follow uh, what is suggested in England, namely to sell off large chunks of the NHS in order to plug a gap in funding that the Tories themselves have created. Simon Thomas. Question. Jane Bryant. <laughs> Government plan to raise awareness about dementia in Wales? Well, we're already running annual campaigns about how individuals can reduce their risk of developing dementia. And the Dementia Strategic Action Plan, due to be published in the autumn, will set out our further plans to raise awareness about dementia in Wales. Dear First Minister, there are an estimated 45,000 people in Wales living with dementia. If the current trend continues, the number of people living with the disease will increase by over 40% over the next 12 years. Raising awareness and understanding the disease is crucial. I was proud to present South Wales Fire and Rescue Newport stations with their Dementia Friends logo and particularly pleased that St Joseph's High School in my constituency has become the first dementia-friendly secondary school in Wales. Will you join with me in congratulating both St Joseph's School and South Wales Fire and Rescue and look at how the Welsh Government can work closely with others to promote this free training, particularly amongst our young people? I do very much welcome uh, the, the example that's been uh, given there. We do work with other organisations, of course, such as the Alzheimer's Society uh, and others to maintain the momentum of the Dementia Friends and Dementia Supportive Communities campaigns so that more and more people understand what it's like to live with uh, dementia as well as being able to recognise its, uh, its symptoms. And that means, of course, uh, making sure that uh, we do look at how we can make more buildings and environments dementia friendly to enable people to live as normal a life as they can for as long as they can. Paul Davis. Yeah. Prime Minister Doug Master, dear Louisine O'Heed, can um the red of the school seal hain are who do I come in a dull fair? Would he not deny vero bradero and lina effet dementia and heaven glad and hide Mindera Vela? And can no stiffig and we both the or come most either galmen or dalot gladig and a gustalar and houster or galgavelar was an ether come more. Vethian skiller bradero and in power with a chunegol much what dread come in a di godi and we both the eth or come most either gal ear hainis in beum and come in a de moing has spell and we gladig. I got so he have it the way to in Messir Penodol, Mark Shawadred, he were de Cavluino, and a day they missed with that. He helped people, Mount Camene de Gledig, Cindy or their dementia. Well, the understudy, of course, he knew a draw the ad newest in Dangos, I'm half father than he wetla, Gosanathan and our Dalot Gledig. On our drafts coming with Cosni Wedi, Kilido, Pekin, a good board death, and Lina Biu Gida dementia, when the Rikali Grosawi gan Bobal Professionals, I think we thought on a mice. Well, Gida dementia, Italia, Nua, Hevid, Trinacy, and Gobali, and Danu. I guess Mana Linet Camorth, Poor Deed, True Druid Luthin, Argar, twenty four seven, see then 
gallu rhoi cymorth emosiynol i bobl sydd wedi cael eu cael diagnosis o dementia hefyd rhywbeth sydd yn gofalu amdano. nhw. Mae'n mynd yn ddoi enghraifft o, o'r ffyrdd ni wedi sicrhau bod yna fwy o gymorth ar gael. Nid dim ond rhywbeth sydd yn dioddau o dementia, ond rhywbeth sydd yn gofalu uh, amdano nhw hefyd. Cwestiwn saith, Hannah Blyfen. Welsh Government doing to increase the number of affordable, housing, affordable homes in North East Wales? Well, we support a range of housing tenures in the North East of Wales and indeed across Wales, and we'll continue to invest in social housing and affordable home ownership. Uh, in addition, we are bringing forward new programmes aiming to make buying a home more accessible. Thank you. I, thank you, First Minister. I welcome this Government's commitment to creating new, decent and affordable homes. And we're actually seeing this commitment put into action in Flintshire with them, we've seen the partnership of a, a, a Labour Council and a Welsh Labour Government working together to see the first new council house in a generation. 82 new council houses where I had the pleasure of actually going to visit the first few who are, that are now open with my colleague David Hanson and with the um, Cabinet Secretary for Local Government. And these are really amazing, brilliant new homes for people in the heart of Flint, in the heart of the community. First Minister, will you today give a further concrete commitment, if you'd excuse us upon, to build on this and ensure much greater numbers of affordable, decent homes under this government? Well, I very much welcome uh, the building of new homes, particularly by an innovative council such as uh, Flintshire. I've seen the homes, indeed I've seen them twice in the past fortnight for reasons that uh, she'd, be, uh, <laughs> she'd be familiar with. But uh, it's an innovative approach uh, that's being taken in, in Flintshire. We want to see more uh, of that approach across the, uh, the whole of Wales. And Flintshire are ahead uh, in their approach to council house building. I want others to follow the example of a good Labour-led authority. David yeah. yeah. What recent discussions has the First Minister had with the UK Government regarding the future of the steel industry in Wales? Uh, the UK Government has lost interest in the steel industry in Wales, is my analysis at the moment, sadly. Uh, we will continue to press the UK Government to play its full part in supporting a long-term future for the steel industry in Wales, as the Welsh Government has done. Well, thank you for that answer, First Minister, and I think it's telling, fully in the answer you've given. The last week I met with senior managers at the Batalbot Works, uh, and we were actually discussing the progress that's being made within the sector, and particularly in the plant. I think we all came to the conclusion that, unfortunately, there are still serious challenges ahead of the sector here in the UK, particularly in light of Brexit and the possible WTO tariffs that may be imposed if we have a leave without any deal, the high overcharges of energy costs that are still facing us, and, of course, the global market, which may be shrinking because of the US 232 sections that may be going on ahead on imported steel in the US. Now, steel workers at that plant are actually breaking records in production. They are delivering on the ground, and they're showing there's a future for steel. Unfortunately, the UK government so far has failed these workers. They have failed our steel industry. They haven't shown scant regard in the industrial strategy, and there is no mention of steel in the manifesto for this election. Now, do you agree with me that, just like the Welsh government here has shown, our steel industry is safer in the hands of a UK Labour government on June the 8th? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have worked hard to ensure, with, with Tata, and in fact, Tata have listened. Uh, to ensure a sustainable future for our steel industry in, uh, in Wales. Uh, there is a threat of Brexit. I mean, a hard Brexit would mean, in effect, that the only free market that the UK steel was able to access would be the UK itself. The UK is too small uh, to, uh, to provide a, a robust market. I hope that isn't the case. We, we all want to see uh, a situation where the UK can export uh, freely to as many markets as possible. But I pay tribute uh, to the workers in, in Tata. Uh, they have shown uh, that then when going gets tough, then the tough get going. They, they are uh, amongst the most productive workers that we have in, in Britain. They have a long and proud history, and they know that when it comes to the support that they can expect, then Welsh Labour will deliver that support. Question now, Darren Miller. Will the First Minister make a statement on what the Welsh Government is doing to improve primary care services in North Wales? Well, we continue to work with the uh, Health Board and other partners to undertake a range of actions to modernise and improve primary care services that are safe and sustainable and as close to people's homes as possible. Uh, First Minister, you will be aware that the British Medical Association was warning many years ago, in fact as far back as 2013, that, that we needed to be training more doctors in Wales and they were warning of a crisis in GP uh, recruitment. You dismissed those uh, assertions at that time, uh, yet since then we have seen uh, over a dozen uh, surgeries across Wales handing in their contracts, saying that they want to terminate contracts, usually uh, because of recruitment problems, the most recent of which is in Colwyn Bay, my own uh, constituency, uh, the second in Colwyn Bay uh, in, just, uh, in just six months. 
this is a big concern uh, to the thousands of people registered with the Russell Dean uh, surgery uh, in my constituency. It is uh, in, at the moment, a purpose-built primary care uh, centre, uh, which it shares with another uh, local surgery. And there are concerns that the withdrawal of the Russell Dean uh, contract may actually put the viability of that new facility uh, at risk. Can I ask, why didn't you listen to the BMA when they raised their concerns? Why didn't you increase sufficiently the number of GP training posts in Wales? You've been responsible uh, for the lack of GP uh, training over the years in Wales. You've been at the helm. Nobody else can't blame the UK government for this. So what action are you taking to rescue the situation in my own constituency in Colwyn Bay? And furthermore, what action are you taking to make sure that Wales has sufficient numbers of GPs going forward? On the first point, uh, what is important is the service that's provided to those who need it. It doesn't have to be provided uh, uh, with the same model across the whole of Wales. You'll be aware that in prostatin, two surgeries uh, did the same thing. They handed in their contracts. What was put in place was better than what was there before, a far more comprehensive no, no, service run directly by the health board. And I know the Health Board is looking to provide a similar service to the people of Colwyn Bay, understandably, and they want to know uh, what the future of the service is. But it doesn't have to be on the contractor model. Uh, increasingly, we know that uh, trainee GPs, uh, many of them, are not interested in buying into a practice. They want to be salaried. Some will want to buy into a practice, but uh, increasingly they, they come out of university, they don't want to find the money in order to buy into a practice, and that is an issue that the medical profession itself must, uh, must look at in terms of what the model should be in, in the future. The contractor model will still be an important part of GP delivery in the future, but increasingly we are seeing the, the younger ones particularly uh, want to become salaried and are happy to work for, uh, for a health board uh, direct. In terms of recruitment, he will know. In October 2016, we launched a new international campaign to promote Wales as a place for doctors to work and train. That national campaign has resulted in a 16% increase in the number of GP training places filled so far compared to last year. As part of that campaign, an incentive scheme is in place to recruit people to some areas, trainees who take up a training place in a specified area will receive some financial uh, support uh, and that is an example of us delivering to make sure that the supply of GPs uh, is at least sufficient in the years to come. I can all our question, Dig Dailoid. I'm not the previous any dog that can yeah the Madame Sarah that are still a null are gave us an ether go about the guide I believe in a channel in a spatai camera. When you discover your host Glavio and Gali Gweld and all the North Glenigo, I go down in Targeda Gaver I'm Sarah Aros, uh, ag oedd gwrs mae'r Llywodraeth Cymru a gwasanaethu iechyd a partneriad y trydydd sector yn cydweithio i wella dar pariaeth gwasanaethu uh, ophthalmoleg i gleifion newydd ac apwyntiadau dilynol i gleifion. Diolch am yr ateb yna. Nawr yn y grŵp trawsbleidiol ar olwg diwedd ara, byd yma'n trafod data oedd yn dangos fod gan fyrddau iechyd ledled Cymru 37,257 o gleifion a oedd ar y pryd yn dioddau oedi i'w apwyntiadau dilynol yn ophthalmoleg. Mae archwiliadau clinigol wedi dangos bod tua 90% o'r cleifion yma mewn perygl o niwed parhaol i'w golwg, hynny yw 33,351 o unigolion yng Nghymru sy'n mewn perig o golli i golwg. Ydych chi'n cytuno bod hyn yn warthus ac yna chi'n cytuno i gyhoeddi nifer y cleifion sydd yn dioddau oedi i'w triniaeth dilynol fel rhan o'ch data rheolaeth ar berfformiad y gwasanaeth iechyd. Well, you knew really well Kenneth and any other boss the Shekal Trinith Ophthalmolic when we are on Mana Gunthin with the Kali Sibatli, so then Kali E. Arwine Gun Clinic with Ihinen, Edmund Traus Newy, the Ford Magos and then Kal E. Gunthinio and Gwai Thredi. Ma Berdi Ahid with the Gwade, board now to Nanam and Say Edmund Sicker High Board Moyo Glynix, Argal, Edmund Moyo Bowl and Kathy Kal Trinith and Mohuna. Yn effeithio nawr ynglyn â cael gwared y baclog o gleifion sydd eisiau triniaeth nawr yn lle mae'n yn gorfod aros. Mae hwnna'n meddwl bod yr amser aros er enghraifft i wet AMD nawr o dan y pythefnos yn ôl y carllawydd sydd wedi cael ei roi i'r byrddau iechyd. Diolch i'r prif wynidog yr oedd ymnesa'r nagenda niwr ddatganiad o chahoedd i'r busnes ar yngau.